Welcome, I'm Kate. There are subtitles and ad-free versions. Work in the summer garden was slowing. The winter greens were in. Soon I'd need room to grow onions and garlic. I was running out of bed space. I needed to fill the gaps. 133. Starting next year's garden. September 3rd, 2024. <sighs> I'm spent. I just shoveled two cartfuls of soil, like actual soil. It's um, compost, the chicken poop, essentially. The neighbor who had to get rid of his chicken had moved all that out of the chicken coop in spring. So it's been sitting out on the soil for a while and the chicken have been digging around in it. And so now I've got chicken coop compost and I've got two cartfuls of that. So I'm making a little no dig bed just because I've got the spare soil and I have no good place to put it right now. So I'm just going to make a bed from it. And I've already started. The first cartful is on there. The second one I'm getting now and in the in the meantime, behind me, the pump is pumping some more water that away. I filled the first card with a chicken coop compost and dumped it onto the cardboard. I checked the cardboard for remnants of plastic tape and large print, then added it back to the bed. The cardboard would stay underneath the soil layer. I still haven't decided what I'll grow here. I got a second card full to finish the bed. I was exhausted, so don't mind the bit of grub. It had been a long day. I'll have to get a lot more soil over for the remaining onion and garlic bits. I'm not looking forward to it. I added the straw back under the bed in a thick layer. I'll have to remove it for planting, then add it a third time. But it's worth it. Growing in mulch is so worth the work I put into moving it around. The grump didn't last long. I've just moved around the grass clippings and the straw where they were lying around. I covered the nook dig bed that I made in a little bit of straw layer and the rest of the straw is on the pile now. There is a pile of grass clippings underneath that and I'm just going to keep turning that unless I need it for mulch. There's also more straw as bedding in the barns that no longer hold animals. So we're just going to make piles for mulch and compost. I still have to do the onion bed at some point and that will require quite a bit of straw. So there's definitely going to be that. Now I'm going to harvest the tomatoes and then I'm going to use the grass clippings to cover the bed with the uh, spinach and or the feldsalat. I don't know what feldsalat is in English. I think it's Burden lettuce, something like that. But yeah, those beds were, are going to get a thin layer of mulch because they haven't germinated yet, just to give them a little bit of a nutrient boost and to keep more moisture in the soil, but not a thick layer, so don't suppress them germinating. And what's really cool is that growing in mulch has actually worked for a lot of things. I have this mixture of a fast ground cover or green manure or whatever you want to call it, and the bed where I planted it is now actually turning green. So I've been seeding that on all the other beds just to keep the ground covered. Some of it will terminate with the first frost. That's fine. We're going to grow onions and winter greens in those beds. So that's fine. And um, some of it will actually survive the winter. I have a package of winter legumes and those are going to stay over winter naturally and uh, keep the ground covered. And I have that in all the beds where I don't want to grow anything over winter. So any bed that I'm terminating for the season, I put the winter legumes in or winter grades. The sun vanished behind the trees while I harvested the last tomatoes. At home, I turned the tomatoes into part of dinner. We also grew that garlic. The wet spring and shaded bed had resulted in a small harvest this year. I also didn't plant enough bulbs for our needs. I'll grow more and in a different spot this winter. I'm also really hoping for larger bulbs. This is fiddly.
We ate mixed tomatoes with chopped garlic and herbs a lot this summer. It's become a go-to choice. As a simple pasta sauce, the start of a casserole, or with some roasted potatoes, it's versatile. The next day. The next day, we had the leftovers for lunch with some cucumber from the garden neighbor. After more than a year on the forest plot, I finally installed the means to lock the garden house. A neighbor had some things moved around and taken, so it was high time to add a locking mechanism. It's time to harvest the sunflowers. It's been a really good year with the sunflowers. They've been my, I'd say, probably most successful crop other than the potatoes, because essentially all the seeds I started germinated and then most of them survived the transplanting despite all the chaos we had in spring. So the sunflowers looked awesome. There are still some that are looking great. I'll keep those. But the ones that have dried and made seeds, I'm going to take those home to finish the drying process. And when they're fully dry, then we're going to process them in some way. I haven't even decided what we're going to do with them. Some of it is going to be seed stock. I'm definitely going to eat some just as snacks because, well, they are delicious. But we don't know what we're going to do with the rest. We're going to figure that out when we know how much we're actually talking. I grew sunflowers this year for next year's garden. This was never about the flowers or seeds. If the idea works out, the stalks will survive the winter and be strong enough next year to support beans and peas. There were some stems left from the previous year when I took over the garden. They lasted all year despite the endless rain. I just took them down the other day. I have hope. While the Tamino and Velvet Queen variants were in full blossom, the regular sunflowers had gone to seed. I added the prettiest heads to a basket to take home and ran out of room quickly. I harvested those that were ripest and left a lot on the stems to harvest another day. I still had to get a second basket from the car to take them home. Most of the sunflowers were planted at bean spacing, so closer together. But I'd also added some to the side of the path. One head grew to a ginormous size. Behind the inner florets, the seeds looked perfect. To dry the sunflowers, we took off all the florets, both the little inner ones and the larger yellow ray florets. The whole heads were then left to dry on a shelf at home for a week or two. I also chopped off as much of the leaves as possible. Despite a harvest the day before, there were again freshly ripe tomatoes to harvest before heading home. This year has taught me a lot about growing tomatoes. I'll adapt next year. We liked some tomato varieties a lot more than others, so we won't grow all again. We will also prune differently, trellis differently, and grow tomatoes in multiple spots in the garden. I'll be working on bed creation this fall to fill the gaps in this garden. I'll need all of the room. Saving seeds for the growing seasons to come has become a normal part of harvesting and cooking. The first marigold heads had gone to seed. I saved some, so I would never have to buy fresh marigold seeds. Only one marigold had survived the spring chaos. It still produced plenty of seeds for the future. I'm excited for next year's garden but I have plenty of work left this year. Week later. It's a very, very cold day. Last night, we even had near freezing temperatures. It was 3.5 degrees Celsius, which is so close to freezing for being a month 
little more than a month away from our first frost date. So I didn't think I'd even have to think about frost yet, but here we are. It is so cold. So long. And thanks for being here. If you want to help me make these videos, go to rootsandcalluses.com slash support. And if you like reading, there's also my novels out there, which you can buy to support them as well. See you in the next one. Bye.